In this problem, we're told starting from rest, a car accelerates at 2 meters per second squared up a hill that is inclined 5.5 degrees above the horizontal. How far horizontally and vertically has the car traveled in 12 seconds? So the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on. Right, so we have this car. We know it's going to be on some incline, right? 5.5 degrees above the horizontal. And what we know is that its acceleration, right, up 5.5 degrees above the horizontal is 2 meters per second squared. Right, so that's basically all the information we know. And we also know it's starting at rest. Right, so we know the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. Right, so we know that. And so now that we've drawn it, what you want to do for solving problems like these is you want to write out the given. But since this is going to be a two-dimensional kinematic problem, what you want to do is write basically the variables you know in the x direction in the y direction. Right, so you want to do both of those, right? Because usually you just have one direction that you focus on, but in this one you have to write what you know in both. Right, so what we want to do is write down the kinematic variables in the x and the y that we know. So let's just start with uh, the x, right? So in the x, we know the initial velocity in the x, right? So the initial velocity is zero, right? And since it's zero, it doesn't matter in the y or x, it's still going to be zero, right? Because you're not moving. So the initial velocity in the x, v sub zero x, is zero meters per second, right? And it's also going to be zero in the y. So v sub zero y is still zero meters per second, right? So we know that. What else do we know in the y? So what we're trying to do is find how far it travels, right? And But the time is uh, irrelevant to the direction. So the time for both of these is going to be 12 seconds. Right, because the time doesn't have uh, like an x or y, right? It's just a flat number. It doesn't make a difference. So the time for both directions is going to be uh, the same, right? Because we're trying to find it for the same time interval, right? And what we're trying to do is solve for delta x, right? The change in the x, right? How far it travels horizontally, and then the change in the y, how far it tra travels in the y, right? So that's what we're solving for. And so there's one other thing they give us, but what we have to do is do a little bit of math to find it. So they give us the acceleration, right, as a vector, right? They give us the direction and they give us the magnitude. But what we want to do is find the direction or the acceleration in the x and the acceleration in the y, right? Because if we have that, what we can do is go ahead and solve. So how do we do that? So what you want to do is imagine it like a triangle, right? And so you should know how to do this by now, but I'll explain it. So uh, this is going to be 5.5 degrees. You just want to label it whatever the incline is, and then take your uh, vector, right? So the magnitude of your vector and put it as uh, the hypotenuse. Right, and so what you do is you want to try to find the x and y component of it, right? The acceleration in the x is going to be this, and the acceleration in the y is going to be that. And so what we want to do is just solve, uh, solve for each of these, and that's going to be uh, what we're trying to find, right? So how do we do it? So let's just start with y. So y, we know the sine of an angle, right? In this case, it's 5.5, is equal to what? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, the opposite is the y. The hypotenuse is 2. So y over 2, multiply both sides by 2, you get y, right? And so this is the acceleration in the y right because we're using uh the acceleration as our magnitude right or not as yeah as our vector right so two times the sine of 5.5 right two times the sine of 5.5 and then it's going to be meters per second squared right and then in the x if we want to find the x what we do is use cosine so in this case it's the cosine of the angle which in this case is 5.5 is equal to um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so it's the x over two and if you want to solve just multiply both sides by two so it's just 2 times the cosine of 5.5. So we can write that as the acceleration for the x. right? And so now what we do is we have three variables in the x and the y. And so what you can do is solve. right? So notice we have the initial velocity in the x, we have the time, and then we have the acceleration in the x. right? So what we can do is solve for the change in x just by plugging it into one of the kinematic equations. right? So the equation we're going to use, right? notice we're solving for delta x and delta y. And uh, we have acceleration, we have time, and we have velocity. And if you look at uh, the third one, right? notice it has all of those variables. So let's just start with a. So a is horizontal, right? So delta x equals v sub 0 times t, right? And so notice this is the x. So v sub 0 x times t plus 1 half a sub x t squared, right? Because you want to plug in all the variables, but they want to be in the same direction. So the velocity in the x is 0. 0 times t, which is 12, is still 0. So it's just 1 half times a. a is just 2 times the cosine of 5.5 right, or a sub x, right, the acceleration in the x, and then you multiply by the time. So the time is 12, right, it's just 12 squared, so this is just 144. Uh, notice 1 half times 2 is going to cancel, so delta x is just equal to 144 times the cosine of 5.5, right, and you just want to go ahead and do this, and that's going to give you, uh, right, how far we're going to travel in the x. So 144 times the cosine of 5.5, if you do that, you're going to get 143 points uh, 337 and so on so you can just round to 143.3 and then keep in mind delta x is measured in meters right it's change in distance how far we're traveling so it's meters so this is your answer to a 143.3 meters or how far we travel horizontally
So now let's do B. So for B, we're going to be doing the same exact thing we did here, right? But notice we're going to use Y variables, right? Because we're trying to find how far it travels in the Y this time instead of the X. So you just want to do the same thing, but in the Y. So yeah, I'm just going to do it here. So same equation, delta Y equals, and then just keep in mind we're using the Y components of these. So V sub zero Y is just zero. Zero times 12, right, which is T, is still zero. So it's just one half times A, or the acceleration in the Y, which is two times the sine of 5.5. Multiply by t squared. So t is just 12 again. So 12 squared. So delta y is just going to be equal to 1 half times 2 is going to cancel. And then this is just going to be 144, right, times the sine of 5.5. Right, and if you go ahead and do this, 144 times the sine of 5.5, uh, you're going to get 13. You're going to get delta y is equal to uh, 13. 0.8 and then the units are going to be meters again right so 13.8 meters right so delta y is 13.8 meters right and this kind of makes sense right because keep in mind if you think about it like a unit circle we're not really moving much in the y right we're moving it's almost a horizontal basically it's just a little bit up so it makes sense that this is much smaller right so delta y is going to be 13.8 meters that's going to be how far we travel in the y so this is going to be your answer to b and then this was your answer to a so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful